ஓம் பூர்ணமத பூர்ணமிதம் பூர்ணாத் பூர்ணமுதச்சியத்தே பூர்ணய பூர்ணமாதாய பூர்ணமேவாவசிஷ்யத்தே ஓம் சாந்தி 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 ஓம் பிரம்மானந்தம் பரம் சுகதம் கேவலம் தியானமூர்த்தி துவந்வாத்தீத்தம் ககன சதிஷம் தத்துவமசியாதிலட்சியம் ஏக்கம் நித்தியம் விமலமச்சலம் சர்வீசாட்சிபூத்தம் பாவாத்தீத்தம் திருகுணரஹிதம் சத்குரு தம் நமாமி ஓம் ரோடேஷன் சத்குரு இஸ் பிரம்மன் தி கிவர் ஆஃப் சுப்ரீம் பிளிஸ் எம்பாடிமெண்ட் ஆஃப் பியோர் கான்ஷியஸ்னஸ் ஒன் விதவுட் எ செகண்ட் வாஸ்ட் தி ஈத்தர் இன்ஃபினிட் eternal beyond the three gunas and their modifications the supreme precept yoga vashistha in sthiti prakarana section 13 the story of shukracharya continues just to give you a simple reiteration Sage Vashistha tells this story to Rama because the entire Yoga Vashistha is in the form of Vashistha giving teaching to Rama just like the Hindi Gita Krishna giving teaching to Arjuna what else to do <laughs> very highly allegorical but in that teaching that vashishtha is imparting to rama he tells this story of shukracharya and the story is that father and son they lived in mandara chala mountains you may not find it in dictionary in the geography <laughs> there are mystic mystic mountains and they loved each other but it so happened now and then bhrigu would <laughs> going deep in samadhi and his son would wander around doing his own sadhana there was a time when sage bhrigu entered into samadhi at lasted for thousands of years when he had big number of duration of time you must understand that's not not to be taken the way you take period of time in your daily life time and space are projections of the mind and if you go develop insight into the magical power of projection try to turn your attention to a screen in cinema show all that the drama you are seeing is matter of projection but in that projection frame after frame are being projected it is not absolute continuity projection is broken in frames in between those frames how much capacity is there for projection if you have advanced mathematics infinity is the answer <laughs> even though it seems like just that you are winking you open or close but within that there is no limit of projecting time space illusions 
let us so therefore <laughs> keeping that in view and that is the purpose behind this story that the world of time space is not the reality time space experience will continue as long as you have mind mind when you attain enlightenment you go into two stages first you have mind but mind has become like a crystal the crystal hold a crystal and it appears as if you are not holding nothing it is so transparent if it doesn't it doesn't have that transparency it is not a good one <laughs> 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 so, that stage comes in your Jivan Mukti state. It does not all come all at once, it is a progressive movement to that type of clarity of mind that does not allow ego to become swallowed. A mind is stripped of doership. I am not the doer, I am not the enjoyer. Then who? Beyond the clouds, the sun. Beyond the mental process, divine self. Without going to that detail, what happens now that while Bhrigu was in profound samadhi, Shukracharya did his own sadhana and at one time while doing his sadhana with closed eyes, he felt that he was watching the mountain valley and enjoying the shimmering clouds, but suddenly became more attentive to the shimmering clouds, not shimmering cloud, <laughs> the shimmering apsara. <laughs> now he became fascinated. And he does not know how, but he followed the Apsara. <laughs> and to his surprise, Apsara also fell in love with him. You must realize his eyes are closed, so he is not realistic. He experiences it. See, when you go to sleep, your eyes are closed. <laughs> but then you experience your dream. And then he goes through heavenly enjoyment, bhoga, lots of enjoyment, a wonderful time. But every soul stays in Swarga, the realm of astral enjoyment, according to the good karma, the karma that allows. When karma is over, souls from Swarga enter into embodiments. So in the storyline it is described in a kind of a jerky way which implies suddenly heavenly person sees his flowers fade. Then normally all those who are in heaven their flowers will never fade. So they don't have to pick up flowers every day. <laughs> and the day it starts fading they know their time has terminated. So they fall. Now both of them fell. And they got into many embodiments. Numerous embodiments at times he became a great king. At times he became just an ordinary creature. But, but at, in the process of repeated embodiments, he came to a stage of becoming a son of a Brahmin in a very 
virtuous family. His name was Vasudeva, not to be confused with Krishna's father. <laughs> and as Vasudeva, he started practicing his, continues his sadhana and he has come to the verge of attaining enlightenment. And that is his role. But while this goes on with the son, father, Bhrigu, after a certain duration, he comes back from Samadhi, looks for his son, and finds his son is nowhere. Goes, gets up, looks for the places where his son used to practice sadhana. And he finds the bones in a terrible situation, he recognizes the son's, son's bones. The beautiful head that he would kiss the head. <laughs> now, in Narakankal, he's a very ugly skull. <laughs> Filled with little birds, that are only thumb size. <laughs> and, and the whole body with spider webs and many other. I don't have to go through that. <laughs> <laughs> he was so affected by it, shocked, that immediately he began to curse time spirit, Kala. Time spirit appears, this is a story, so everything becomes possible in stories. <laughs> and time spirit says that, O oh sage, why are you losing all your good karmas, all the austerity? Look within yourself, what has happened to your son is by, led by his, his own karmic process. Time, spirit, me, I'm not responsible. Time does not punish you or reward you. You are the author behind it. And so we are in this process. Time, spirit goes on giving insight into what has happened to Shukracharya. And behind, and behind all that, inside is the illusory nature of the world. The time spirit continued, all souls arise like waves from the ocean of Brahman. Brahman is described as ocean. And all souls are like waves in that ocean, in Vedic scriptures. The source, Brahman is called Apa, water, but not ordinary water, ocean of water. And every soul is sourced by that ocean of water. Therefore, in folk language in India, every individual is called Aap, with respect. Aap kya karte hain? Aap kya karti hain? Aap. And the meaning of up, water, <laughs> not ordinary water. Water that quenches the thirst of the soul, the very essence behind the entire universe. So, all souls arise from Brahman.
of them sub destroy the veil of ignorance and master its illusory forces. They are called Uttam Sadhaks. Spirants come in three groups. It's just a broad, so don't count only three. You see. <laughs> Each one has countless branches, but giving a major evaluation. Uttam is one, the best ones realize I am Brahman and the world is not real, illusory. The realization comes in their lifetime. Those who have that possibility, they are the best as far. These best aspirants, they roam like gods on earth until the termination of their prarabdha karmas. The second type, rather the third type, but others being dull and insensitive, like logs of wood, continue to whirl through the cycles of birth and death. They are called mand, dull with, dull with aspirants. There are still others in whom moha or illusion exists in an attenuated form. And they are bound to attain liberation. They may slip this birth, they get into another birth, or two or three more. So this is medium type, madhyam type, middle type as part. One is top type, which is uttam, the best. Another is the third type, mand, dalvit. In between comes this moderate type or middle type. So figure that out, that's a simple. <laughs> when evil karmas of the past lose their hold over a person, his mind gradually becomes free from the impurities of pride, passion, anger, what known as shut repose, karma, perverted desires, krodha anger, lobha greed, Moha delusion, Mada pride, Matsarya jealousy. These six, they are the highlight in all religions of the world. And Christianity highlights it so much that it puts a stamp on the head of ignorance. Six, six, six. Why three times? Because these vices color up your thought, word, and deed. So six vices relating to thought, operating through your thoughts. Six vices operating through your speech, operating through your actions. Six, six, six. And that's the identification for Satan. <laughs> and Satan is Sat now. <laughs> Negator of Sat truth. <laughs> if you negate truth, you are called Shaitan. <laughs> Shaitan. <laughs> so we can work. I'm joking. So in the case of one who has attained enlightenment, these six, six, six bind, bind attains 
freedom from the satanic impurity in a progressive manner. It doesn't happen all at once, but gradually. He develops aspiration for attaining self-realization. And this indeed makes him a qualified aspirant to study the wisdom of the scriptures. All this allegorical writing implying that as your mind becomes purified, greater your capacity to understand the scriptures. The scriptures remain palabras, just words. But as your mind gets purified, you gain insight. And as you gain insight, your mind gets more and more purified. So it goes both ways. Just as vanishing mist gives rise to the revelation of the sky, this is the picture of vasanas. Subtle desires are like mist or cloud. With the presence of cloud, you are not able to see the sun. But as the cloud or mist moves away, sun is always there. It, was, it never went away. To a child, sometimes difficult to tell what has happened. Too much sun, cloud has come, the sun is afraid of flu. <laughs> <laughs> so he ran, ran home. <laughs> I'm joking, but nothing, not a joke. That's the way human mind works. It is only when the mind swells with, ino its, with erroneous thoughts and negative sentiments that it sustains the illusory projection of the world process. Or just as children are afraid of ghosts in the darkness of night, which are mere projections of their own fears, Sometimes see animals afraid of their own shadows and worse still, afraid of their own tails. <laughs> and they run in the circles. Seems quite humorous. <laughs> but that's the predicament of every person gripped by ignorance. Not always, you have always a room for evolution. The ignorant project the world process that arises out of their own distracted minds. Again, <laughs> think of the power you have in your glass. All that you have to do you have allow your mind to think. Fascinating project. How wonderful it would be if we could wipe the whole world with one beautiful color. Now, dissolve that. Put, a, put that color glass. And, and you see the whole world painted within a moment. So even though you are enjoying colored world, it is not real. And yet you have the capacity, you have that art to change your glass, put the colorings. So that's what happens by changing vasanas, subtle desires in your mind to undergo changes. And as they change, you experience a change in, in whatever you experience. The world, that's what you experience.
And that's described as you created the world. You didn't create it. The illusion is brought about that all that experience, mind has become deluded. Nothing real has been created by the mind. Every jiva or individual soul follows the course of the mind and its desires. Led by the mind, it experiences numerous births and deaths, ascends to the heights of heavenly enjoyments, and descends to hellish misery. This is just the elaboration of the Raj Yogic statement. Mind is the cause of bondage and release. It's an unspicy statement. <laughs> but the same statement is described. Everyone has the capacity, the mind can experience numerous births and deaths, can ascend to the heights of heavenly enjoyment and descend to hellish misery. Let us not delay any more and proceed to where your son is engaged in austerity by the Samanga river. That's the time the spirit has been telling all that to Bhrigu, who is suffering from separation from his dear son. Shiva continued, O Rama, having conversed on the power of the mind, the time spirit and sage Bhrigu both descended from the Mandarachala mountains and proceeded towards the banks of the Samanga river. <coughs> Before I go to the bank, I'll do something. <laughs> After passing through the most enchanting spectacles of nature, they finally reached the banks of the river. There they saw Shukracharya in a different personality and absorbed in Samadhi. Try to understand. It's a shocking experience. Someone were to open your mind to some little recall from your past lives and your mind becomes sensitive. You are actually recalling it as you had seen before. And then in that process that someone takes you to a house which is just in your own neighborhood and touches your head and you develop sensitive, oh, this was the house that I worked so hard. And you will remember how much money you had to borrow, <laughs> how much legal fight you have to do. <laughs> and this is my picture still in that house. <laughs> Presently, we are in a different personality. We are 30 year old, young man. <laughs> and there's a very old person there. <laughs> I'm joking, but I to understand that type of. And it is not a joke. That's the reality. Only human mind doesn't want to, to work that way. You would have not just come from nowhere. Through many lives, many skeletons have been around. You have been a medical student, you might be studying your own skeleton <laughs> without knowing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and it doesn't matter. <laughs> Bodies are all matter. The same matter that lived, made many souls, formed their bodies. They are forming your bodies, forming our bodies. <laughs> Even while you are alive, your body is diffusing in matter. And matter is going into the bodies of all. And this is not a not something for you to believe, this is reality. It's pure science. They find they saw Sukracharya in a different personality, absorbed in samadhi. His senses were withdrawn and his mind calm and steady. Like a weary traveler, he had traveled through many embodiments, but now he was resting in the spiritual state. The time spirit awakened the Brahmin Vasudeva. You must realize this is Shukracharya in the form of this Brahmin. Through it. He has come through many repeated embodiments. And time spirit is Shukracharya is in the state of Samadhi and time spirit awakens him. He gradually opens his eyes, opened his eyes and beheld before him two spiritual beings like the sun and moon. Time spirit was like the sun, lot of shine. Father was the moon, lot of love coming from him. Rising from his meditative pose, he bowed at the feet of two divine personalities and expressed immense joy at their presence. Sage Virgu urged the Brahmin to remember his past and recall how he was Shukracharya, his son, who has wandered through many embodiments and has presently adopted the personality of the Brahmin. Vasudeva. The young ascetic then directed his intuitive vision towards the mystery of his identity and was amazed to discover the fact that led by the desires of his mind, he had passed through numerous embodiments. He remembered having enjoyed not only royal pleasures and wonderful conditions of life, but also great miseries as well. But now he realized that he had developed a spiritual insight into the illusory, na illusory nature of the world process. Shiva continued, the three of them then proceeded to where the remains of Shukracharya were in the Mandarachara mountains. Adopting their yogic powers, they flew through the sky and emerged through the clouds at the exact spot where the body was. The Brahmin saw his skeleton covered with green leaves. It's kind of a wonderful drama. <laughs> He's visiting his own, own embodiment. He's gone through many embodiments. If you were to imagine, if even your five embodiments come together, shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> It will go viral. <laughs> 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 
But what does it go viral? <laughs> that you are not just five embodiments. You are all this. All human beings. But don't be too surprised. <laughs> you are not all human beings. You are all mountains. <laughs> all oceans. All stars. All that is. <laughs> this is the truth. But now, it will lead you on to that. The many stages, because you say suddenly all <laughs> minded. <laughs> but in this drama, say, what happened? <laughs> so there's an art in leading the mind. So he sees. Just like you <laughs> imagine, you left your house due to vol volcanic and some months, torrential rains and hurricanes, and you come back after things have this. And now we remember seeing every little thing, how you loved this, how you loved that. This type of Description is meant to promote vairagya. Vairagya means don't stay too cozy with the world. <laughs> While living in the world, go on intensifying your spiritual wealth that will lead you to immortality, lead you to the realization you are not a mortal person. And how can that happen? Unless the mind sees the illusory nature of things, deceptive way things appear, and predicament of being deceived by the world of eat, drink, be merry. Shukracharya in the Brahmin embodiment said, O oh Father, this is my dried up body, an inert body which you had nourished and sustained by providing food, comfort, enjoyment. This is the body that received so much affection. This is the body that was loved by the celestial Apsara, but now it lies bereft of all its handsome charms. This, the very body that once roamed through groves of sandalwood trees, see, lies as an ugly skeleton, crawling with worms. It's the reality behind everybody, the same story. <laughs> but now, using literature, sahitya. <laughs> he grieves over his body. Having done all the austerity, <laughs> he actually he is not in the stage of grieving, <laughs> but grieving to help others. The topic of grieving is to bring, is brought forth general aspirants. Now, come back to the story. He sees the body of his past embodiment and he's grieving. Oh, my beloved body, <laughs> you are not, you are, you are called Shava, dead, not Shavasana. Not dead pose, real dead. At one time you bloomed with youthfulness. See? But now you strike fear in my heart. Behold, how you were once adorned with golden necklace that shone like a star's. 
But now ants infest your neck and chest. You are no longer dominated by the chitta, the evil spirit of chitta. So there is some advantage as well, see, in spite of all that. You are no longer worried or <laughs> you are not suffer suffering any pain. You are no longer shaken or driven by the monkey mind. You no longer suffer from the fever of desires. You are no longer interested in seeing the sights around you. No longer do you want to hear the roaring of the lions, the trumpeting of the elephants, or to see the curious events of the forest life. Sri Vashishtha said, O Rama, under the divine plan, Shukracharya had to exist in a body as the son of sage Bhrigu. So in a storyline, he leaves for the present, the body that is now presented through the story Vasudeva and back to his original body, Shukracharya. But this, plain, this is a plain story. But because his mind had led him astray from his normal course of life, Shukracharya was amazed to see how things had come to pass. The ignorant as well as the wise must both live through the body as determined by their prarabdha. Deha dhare ka danda hai, sab ka As long as you are embodied, whether you are enlightened or half enlightened or one third enlightened <laughs> or not enlightened, no matter what, your body goes through its own course. While illumined sages living in their bodies remain detached from the world. But the liver, it lives through the body, not the biological liver. <laughs> <laughs> or you live through the body. <laughs> That remains detached. I am not the body. And therefore, he does not create future karmas. He is free of karmas. With enlightenment, past karmas are simply burnt up. All future karmas are impossible. The present goes on flowing until it comes to an end. Ignorant souls continue to create new karmas, even until the end. That is not so in the case of one who is enlightened. When the mind of the sage has given up its longings for objects of the world, then neither can the actions of the body nor the functions of the senses create further bondage for him. Thus, throughout, thus, though outwardly acting in this world, a sage is inwardly detached and free. Thus, knowing, O Rama, do not fall into this pit of the world process. You are not con contained in the illusory body. Nor, nor does this body abide in you. You are essentially the Supreme Self. Think for easy understanding, thinking of dream experience. In dream you are facing a challenge, hard time, hardly you have come back from a big tour and sitting on his, in your couch. <laughs> Some <laughs> wise crow comes into the house <laughs> and says, he was not real. <laughs> this never happened. <laughs> oh, this is illusion. <laughs> 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 
then you will become too upset <laughs> when the crow is saying the right thing. Shivashistha continued, O Rama, interrupting the lamentation of Shukracharya, the time spirit said, O son of Bhrigu, discard this body of yours that you have been using to practice austerity by the Samanga river and enter into your previous body even as a king enters the royal city. The cosmic will has ordained you to be the guru of the asuras. I have already explained that a, pro a powerful position, he becomes the guru who gu guides the energies operating in the, in the realm of the lower self. That is to say, when you deal with anger, hate, greed and all these, they also follow a whole philosophy. And behind philosophy there is a PhD. <laughs> <laughs> and that's done by Shukracharya. And thus saying, the time spirit disappeared. Having understood the nature of his karmic process, Shukracharya then renounced the body of the Brahmin Vasudeva, abandoned the body, left the body, and entered his original body as body of, of sage, sage, son of sage Vrigu. That's Shukracharya. Immediately the body of Vasudeva trembled and fell, like a creeper cut its roots. Then sage Vrigu, along with the chanting of mantras, sprinkled water on the skeleton to facilitate the re-entry of his son's spirit into the original body. Soon the skeleton began to change. Veins appeared and pranas began to flow like a withering plant that comes back to life through the aid of the life-giving rain. In the same way, the body passed through many changes and came back to life. The whole drama from very ugly, skulls degenerating parts of the body and all that and lots of worms now suddenly seen changes. Suddenly body becomes all free from all, all type of distortions and start coming up. First the body straightens itself and life begins to operate through the body. The eyes begin to open up, the fingers begin to, <laughs> the toes begin to work. <laughs> Give me a drama about it. <laughs> Simple way to understand, the drama applies to everyone. <laughs> Look in a biological way, how, ha how has been your body formed and what is what, the, what, what are the constituents of your body? You are shocked. If you were to see, you develop X-ray eye, you will find Shiva Ganas everywhere. <laughs> Only <a> skeletons. 
But fortunately, you don't have that. <laughs> In other words, from a very <coughs> skeleton state, how nature brings out the body. Like an artist, you start first a statue, just a skeleton statue. But then you start padding up, make the hair, make the eyes, make the body, make the smile, <laughs> so many things. And all in front of the people who are sees this wonder how all this happens. But same is applied in every life. Even a little butterfly comes. Even a little flower blossoms, even a little gra grass pushes its blade. Wonder of wonders. But human mind doesn't have the time for all that. TV is waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of news are breaking. So now it is dramatizing. The body of Vasudeva trembled and fell like a creeper cut at its root. Then sage Vrigu, along with the chanting of mantras, sprinkled water on the skeleton to facilitate the re entry of his son's spirit into the original body. Soon the skeleton began to change. Veins appeared. The pranas began to flow. Like a withering plant that comes back to life through the aid of the life-giving rain, in the same way the body passed through many changes and came back to life. Soon the body became well-formed and consciousness returned to it. Having regained his previous body, Shankara Shukracharya stood up and adored his father with a voice as deep as a rumbling cloud. Sage Vrigu felt a new surge of affection as he embraced his son. Though by his inward vision, he saw the illusoriness of the realities of the world. In other words, what simple point you are being given. Whenever you talk of enlightened sages and their experience so beyond the world. But don't become frustrated. <laughs> you can also be like a gentle person. <laughs> Hold on to all worldly realities. And there is no contradiction. Rather, he has greater art to express his art. In the course of time, Shukracharya accepted the role of becoming the preceptor of the demon race. And in, even now, he continues to perform that role. And though performing this duty, Sri Shankaracharya ever abides in the Absolute Self, ever detached from the world process. And with this, we'll conclude. Om Poonamadah Poonamidam Poonat Poonamudachyate Poonasya Poonamadaya Poonamevavashishyate Om Shanti 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 Om Haryom